Now chapter 8 and 9 and 10 kind of go together. Now chapter 8 is, is since uh, putting down the principle of what we call Christian liberty. Chapter 9 is, is really what Paul is going to kind of apply it to himself. And then chapter 10 is a little further, uh, and we'll get back to this idea of offerings, idols, and things of that sort. And, um, and, and, and really, the, the, the idea of the conscience, okay? And we looked at the, what the conscience, the function of the conscience last week was. We have looked at, uh, in a sense, the, the strong brother, a weak brother, a strong sister, a weak sister, all that. Um, and then we've compared that. But now, uh, tonight I'm going to look at the case of what we call a weak brother. A weak brother or sister, okay? Now, um, when I think of uh, the conscience and its function, you see, on, on my van, I have this little, this little engine light. And I have this little code setter, and I know what number it is. And uh, I was doing an oil change the other night, and I went under and I looked at the part that I'm supposed to replace according to this code. I said, well, that won't be too hard, that, but next time I get it under. And so I put the code reader in, and I erased the code, and the light goes away. But when am I going to change the defective part? And we, we, we illustrated the conscience like, like that little engine light. I mean, the worst thing you do is ignore an engine light. I mean, especially an oil light <laughs> or a temperature gauge. You, you, yeah, those two are critical uh, in the sense of maybe uh, blowing up the motor or something like that. But when we talk about a weak brother, we, we can't say, well, let's replace the defective part. It's really not that easy not that easy. Now, when we think about a weak conscience here, um, notice, for example, let's look at one verse for a minute, uh, 1 Corinthians 8, verse 7. It says, uh, How be there is not in every man that knowledge, for some with conscience of the idol unto this hour, eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience being weak, it defiled. And so we're talking about a weak brother. Now, uh, an overworked conscience, um, a stickler, scruples, they call it, uh, convictions, uh, and, and just, uh, it seems, uh, it might be a young uh, uh, Christian in the faith, right? You know, think about the, when you first got saved, you know, and what God saved you from. And... Uh, I'm not saying that over years, like one, one uh, brother, uh, we were back in, in, uh, in California, and I think it's Philippians 3 something, it says, uh, uh, talked about the, in all things, use moderation for the Lord is at hand. And so he said, uh, Tom, you're zealous now, and you're, you're a baby Christian now, but let, uh, you know, in a while you'll just mellow out, and you'll be moderate. And, and I said, I, I really don't want that. But he was talking more than just being zealous or being Christian. He's talking about how I view uh, certain things and my conviction. And so sometimes you think of a young Christian, uh, especially, you know, don't, don't forget, you know, living in Corinth, right? The paganism, the, the idols, the, the temple worships, the prostitution, the, the immorality, the drunkenness. I mean, just the, you know, we don't really have to go far or stretch our imaginations as we think about Cornwall and other places. Okay? And so maybe a young Christian being delivered um, out of these things, especially as we apply to uh, meat offered idols and idol worship, all like that, it was like, I don't, I don't want to touch that with a 10-foot pole. I don't want to go near those idol worshipers. I don't want to have anything to do with the, the meat offered. And, and how could you even eat that stuff? But also, I think, there's not only young Christians, but there's um, one, uh, one commentator said this, and it was interesting. There are those that willingly neglect um, the means of grace, and they don't really grow. Okay? It's like they, they like that situation of a weak conscience. Now, let me show you what, what, uh, what verses, Hebrews 5, 11 through 15. Hebrews 5, 11 through 15. Now this is, 
This is cor correlating with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We would say carnal Christians or, or baby Christians. Okay? Uh, but notice what the Hebrew writer says about these ones. Of whom, this is Hebrews 5 verse 11, of whom we have many things to say and hard to utter, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those by whom reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now remember we said last week that you know, uh, the conscience is renewed by regenerating grace, right? Just like our mind and our emotions and our uh, will. We're, we're a new creature. We're, we're recreated in the image of Christ. And, and so our conscience is, needs to be renewed. It's like a, a biased uh, judge, right? Like one man said, it's like the courtroom. You know, you go into the courtroom and, and uh, you, you still see the same jurors, and you, you, but you know it needs to be renewed, and your mind needs to be renewed. I'm not talking about you know uh, license to sin, but uh, and so here it says it says. Uh, but notice it's interesting. He's the Hebrew writer is talking about strong meat and milk, and he's not talking about meat offered to idols. He's talking about the word of God. He says. Uh, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Uh, but strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. And so here's a, a mature Christian or one that has knowledge. Paul talks about those in, in 1 Corinthians 8. Those that have knowledge and those that don't have knowledge. Okay, to those that are mature, like the Apostle Paul, he would say, well, the idol is nothing. Awful offering meat um, to idols or nothing. Uh, men doesn't, uh, meat doesn't commend me. I'm not the better or the worse. You know, it's, you know, I pray over it. I give thanks. It's blessed. I eat it. But Paul says, not everybody has that knowledge. But you see, they might be a baby Christian, but here again, you know, um, it says, for everyone that, uh, but strong meat belonging to them that are full of uh, full age, even those who by reason of use, you see, see that's, that's wisdom, exercise, knowledge, exercise. Reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Remember those verses in, in, uh, in Philippians and Colossians where we're talking about, you know, that our love will abound, our discernment should abound unto more wisdom, understanding. You see, it's not just knowledge that we need tonight. We need wisdom, applied knowledge, we need, and, and we need our senses uh, exercised to discern both evil, both good and evil. And that is, that is where the conscience, you know, I'm educating my conscience, so, well, this is, you know, meat off the idol is really not a, a serious issue. And uh, uh, maybe I was uh, an idol worshiper, like Paul said, these people, these Christians in Corinth, they were idol, and, and some understand, well, is this really not nothing? It's nothing. Okay? But then another brother, a weak brother, you know, uh, like it says there in verse 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, uh, how we, there is not in every man that knowledge. For some with conscience of the idol, it's like it's just something in the back of their minds. And, it, and it, it's like they, they haven't progressed yet. They haven't understood that this is nothing. And so in a way, they, they're weak in bondage. So I said, there are some that are young in the faith that need to grow up, and there are some that just kind of, they don't want to grow up. They don't want to grow up. And they, they willfully neglect the means of grace, okay? You know, we ought to grow. Um, but notice here, in verse 7 again, see, this, this meat is offered to an idol, and uh, my conscience, or the conscience of this person is saying, don't eat it. Don't eat it. But he or she does. Notice what it says. Their conscience being weak is defiled. Weak. See, they, in a sense, they don't have the strength to say no. How is your convictions? 
Well, where do you get your convictions? Now, think of uh, Joseph in the Old Testament. Now, I was thinking about that. Um, you know, knowledge would help out this one in 1 Corinthians, either to resist the temptation or, or, uh, or uh, eat without offense, right? That's the only two, or, either or. Either his conscience becomes educated and where he realizes, well, you know, I have strength to resist, you know, I, I think this is wrong and I believe it's wrong, I persuade it's wrong, we'll see those terms in, in these verses, and so I'm just not going to do it. And, and uh, you know, again, I, I respect a brother or sister who, who you know, they have convictions and, and they hold to them. Now, some of them are pretty, you know, some of these convictions, you know, like, even like some of mine, you know, it's a little, a little strange here. Uh, but in love, we kind of, we, 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 uh, we work with them, okay? But can you imagine Joseph there in Potiphar's house with a weak conscience? I can't imagine that. I can't imagine Joseph saying, I know this is wrong. Or is it? I know, you know, what Potiphar's wife is asking is wrong, or is it? But, but either way, I can't help myself. You see, old habits, old ways die hard, don't they? That's where that, that young Christian comes in, you see. It, it's, it's like, uh, you know, uh, you know, we mentioned this before, you know, the, the, the brother who, who used to be a drunkard and, and he, had, he, he got saved and he kept on getting drunk and he couldn't figure out why and, and he talked to his pastor and talked to people and he says, and, and finally came to the conclusion, he said, well, uh, how do you go home? I go, I've been go, I go home the same way I've been going for 30 years, along, along the, where the bars are. And the pastor said, well, don't do that. Go some other way. And he didn't have, you know, you think of something so simple as that? You see, and uh, but you see, I can't imagine, you know, Joseph doing that. He 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 he, he was strong. Was he was he not a man of strong conviction? He didn't uh, play with fire. He didn't rationalize it. He didn't, you know, uh, you know, capitalize on it. I hate to say that. You know, this this is a this is a, I, I can I can have some. Uh, you see that? No, no, he ran. And so, um, in Genesis 39.9, this is what Joseph says. He says, There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? You see, his conscience was informed. And because he, he wasn't a weak. But see, this brother here, in 1 Corinthians 8.7, I'm just going to say a brother, a key, okay, just for the sake of... Of, uh, not worrying about he or she, but it can be applied to both, okay? Notice here in verse 7, 1 Corinthians 8, it says, uh, their conscience being weak is defiled. Now, it's interesting, this word defiled, it, it, it means stained, spoiled. Remember we said uh, there, there's a difference, uh, like in, in first, uh, I think it's uh, Titus chapter 1, about having their conscience defiled. I mean, that, that is contaminated uh, through and through. Here we see, uh, this is a Christian and their conscience is, is stained or becomes dirty. You know, like the Lord says uh, to Peter, you know, we, we, we wash our feet. Uh, we get dirty from the world, okay? And so with the washing of the word, and, and here we have a stain on our conscience because uh, we, we, um, we violate it. We'll see that in a minute. But let me read to you something that gets you an idea of what, the, what does it mean to have a defiled conscience? And it doesn't really convey, uh, you know, the word stain or defilement. No, here's what John McArthur says, and it's, I think it's interesting. If such person is following the example of more knowledgeable believers, go ahead and eat what their conscience tells them not to eat. Their conscience being weak is defiled. We'll see that. And really that's the case. Okay? Uh, the, the man comes along and he, and he sees a brother in, in, in a restaurant. <laughs> I remember, I told you this before, years ago, you know, we were sitting there in a, in a Chinese restaurant and, and, and I said to this, 
he professed to be a Christian, my best friend. I said, you know, uh, we're eating food offered to idols. And I must have been just studying it. And that's 30, 35 years ago. So like that. And, and he said, what? I said, see that little Buddha there? Uh, we came in, they were offering incense, this fruit there. Uh, you know, should we eat this food? And I was serious. I mean, I was studying it out for myself way back then. And I said, well, you know, and then I, I went to the Word as well. You know, the idol is nothing. I, you know, I go to First Timothy, First Timothy chapter four, talk about how doctrines of devils and and how if we pray and, and ask for, for God's blessing, you know, it, it's clean. It's nothing impure. But see, so it says, if such persons follow the example of more knowledgeable believers, go ahead and eat what their conscience tell them not to eat. Their conscience being weak is defiled, even though. An act in itself is not morally or spiritually wrong. It becomes wrong when it is committed against conscience. Now, a weak brother, maybe be, like I said, a young Christian or someone who's not exercising, not, you know, if you stay out of the Word of God, or if you just renew your mind with the, the daily newspaper, okay, and, and, and flood your mind with, with all the the uh, murder, you know, it, it, you're desensitized your conscience. You're, you're not building it up. You're you're making it more uh, like like uh, Sister Christina and I talked about last week about uh, John MacArthur's book, uh, uh, the vanishing conscience. You see, he in the whole, in a sense, the the, the premise of that book in a, in a nutshell is that the church has lost discernment. What is this sermon? Well, it's an educated conscience. This is wrong. This is still wrong, and it's based upon the Word of God. Now, these are some gray areas, and we acknowledge that, okay? And, and we have to acknowledge that there are some brothers that are, you know, weak, and some brothers that are not. And so the, the Bible covers that. Uh, and so this one doesn't have discernment, we could say. A defiled conscience, according to John MacArthur, is one that has been ignored and violated. See, there's that red light. And, 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 okay. and it's ignored, violated. Such a conscience, being uh, such a conscience, brings confusion. I think of that for a minute. Resentment and feeling of guilt. Think of the last time when that little red light went on. Resentment towards who? Towards yourself? Hmm. A person who violates his conscience willingly does what he thinks to be wrong. In his own mind, he has committed sin. And until he fully understands that the act is not sin in God's eyes, he should have no part in it. He gives a quote, he says, He who doubts is condemned if he eats, because he eats, eating is not with faith, and whatever is not with faith is sin, in Romans 4, 14, 23. We'll look at that verse, but defiled conscience is, is defiled faith. Such believer, such behavior brings guilt, guilt, feelings, despair, loss of joy and peace. It may also lead to sinful thoughts connected with formal pagan practices, even lead a person back into some of them. You see, once you... You see, once you violate your conscience, and uh, you know you convince yourself that you really did sin, uh, it is a slippery slope down. Unless, unless what? Well, we, we have other brothers and sisters. You know, God, Holy Spirit. Again, uh, different places. You know, Romans fourteen talks about how, how how God will keep keep this person out. Of, you know, if you're a true believer, keep him from falling. But you see, uh, the problem is that he he he's sinned against his conscience, he violated his conscience, uh, he, he, he knew, to him it was sin. Now you think about that, that's pretty subjective. So the red light flashes before, uh, but now bright red, warning, danger, and it's too late. Now in a sense the conscience is wounded. Verse 12 of, of uh, chapter 8, uh, he is offended, verse 13. So let's look at for a minute how a weak conscience works. We've looked at, the first part is that, you know, 
when a, when a brother, I mean, it may not be that while well, he's looking at the brother there eating at the table, okay, <laughs> uh, but you know, he sins, and we look at how does a how does a, a weak conscience work? But now let's let's put in uh, this other element, you and I as a Christian, and this brother is a weak brother or sister, and he's looking, they're looking at you, and they're observing your Christian liberty, what you allow to do, and what you allow to. And, uh, and uh, what you know, allowed to do, and all that. Okay, so in 1 Corinthians 8, verse 10. 1 Corinthians 8, verse 10. For if any man see thee which has knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be involved to eat those things which are offered to idols? And so the scenario is. Well, I'm, I'm there eating my Chinese food, whatever, you know. I'm eating my pork, bacon, and a brother comes along and uh, he, he doesn't have that conviction. He, he, he's, he's, he's conscious, you know, maybe, uh, you know, uh, for some reason, okay. I, I mean, a weak Christian, a young Christian, uh, maybe, you know, again, dear ones, listen, we're, we're not... You know, we like to think that we know the Bible pretty well, but I, I, I believe we really don't. And we're not students of the Word of God as we, we should be, okay? Uh, personally, and, and, uh, and so we, we neglect the means of grace, and therefore we, we, we neglect growth, okay? I mean, the Scriptures, Hebrews chapter 5, that's what Paul's saying. That these ones that are desiring milk, and, and uh, so... But notice here, this word in... Uh, Emboldened? Is that the word? Emboldened? Uh, in verse 10? The word is, it means to build up, to edify, to strengthen. Okay? So, uh, so the idea is this. The weak brother would go along and see the brother there and he's eating this food. And he said, well, so-and-so is eating it. I should be able to. So and so is doing it. I should be able to do it. And, and remember the list of uh, you know Christian liberty items that we gave a while ago. You know there, there's a lot of things you know that uh, that we have liberty to do and and gray area, gray areas that we have to be careful. But you see when when he says well so and so is doing that. Um, he's he's taking the meat from the marketplace. He's eating it. He's at the temple there. He's eating. Uh, I should be able to do it, and he ignores the red light, and he, in a sense, stammers or uh, puts down the conscience. He goes ahead, and he commits sin. Well, well brother, it's not a sin, you know. It, don't you know? No, I don't. No, no, doesn't God, you know, here's what God's word, but I, I, I still, he said he has consciousness, maybe his past life, you know, before he was a Christian, you know, maybe in idol worship, you know, there are all kinds of things that, that he's, he's just, he's not on the same page, he's not, his conscience needs to be renewed, his mind, and therefore, he, but he says, he sees my, my brother's doing that, must be okay. I mean, you know, we, we make an issue on social drinking, don't we? But I, I know some brother that that, that that don't they don't have no problem with a glass of wine at dinner. Am I gonna you know? And we're gonna see this, okay, brother, as we come to Romans 14. We're gonna jump there in a few minutes. But you know, am I to sit in judgment of that brother? And is that brother gonna look on me and despise me because I'm so weak? Well, see, that's what happens in real life, right? So he commits sin, and so let me. Notice what it says there in Romans 14. Turn there, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll jump, uh, we'll, we'll kind of stay in Romans 14, because it's, it's parallel passages. There's a lot in both, in, in, in uh, 1 Corinthians and Romans 14. But I just want to read to you uh, Romans 14, 22 and 23. Now this is, these are, these are tremendous verses. And this is really the, the foundation. I mean, 
The one verse that, uh, let me read it to you from 1 Corinthians 8. You don't have to turn there, but he says, uh, remember that, that key verse. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. You know, act in love towards a wicked brother. And then we come over here, and we're kind of looking at not only... Um, for, for every brother, every Christian, okay? This is the principle, okay? He says, hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in what things which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned, or judged, condemned, wounded, if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Remember, this, this weak brother is saying, well, this is a sin against God. In fact, it, it, it is not. And so, you, you say, well, he's deceived. Well, you know, he has to be educated. Yes, that's true. But see, again, uh, that's the way we are, right? We're different Christians, we're at different levels of spirituality. Uh, we, we, can, we allow certain things, and we can't allow certain things, and... You know, again, I mentioned this, the idea of Christmas and all that. I, I'm not trying to make an issue of that, or I, I've never had, really. But you see, I, I just don't, I don't have a good conscience toward that. I, I don't have, you know, I, my convictions are I, I would do without it totally, 100%. And I have done that, basically, in my family, at home, okay? Uh, because uh, I read things about it, and... Uh, and I, I believe it's just a Roman Catholic holiday, and you say, well, brother, you're just a weak, weak, weak brother. Okay, I accept that. And I'm not going to stand and, and judge you and say, well, you're actually idolaters for having a tree in your home. <laughs> and I've, I've been through that, brother. Honestly, I have. I mean, way back in the first thing, man, you know, I remember, uh, <laughs> you know, Christmas time, you know, December 25th. Gripe and complaining because nobody opened. Why? I can't even go out to eat because, you know, this pagan holiday. Just really not. I was judgmental. I was judging every Christian. How could you be an idolater? Well, see, it's taken a lot, taken a lot of years to realize, well, that, that's not really the, the case. Okay? I, I'm not going to judge you or despise you. And, uh, and I'm also not going to violate the part of... Uh, you know, their husbands and, and dads are ahead of their homes, not me. Okay, I, I have to give liberty to every, every father, every dad, every head of the household. And it is how they manage, you know, I, I'm to, to live the word and preach the word and be an example. And then you, you have to do with, with what I give you. And you compare it to the word of God and you say, well, I'm not going to live that way. It's just like the marriage booklet back there. Well, just, uh, that... Pastor, you're just extremist. You really believe that? That's so old-fashioned? You really, you know, you're going to, you know, if, you know, force your daughters and sons to live, you know, do it that way? Boy, get with it. You're in the 21st century. Anyways. Just because other people are doing it doesn't mean I can do it. Romans 14, verse 20. For meat destroyeth not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. Now, have you ever known a Christian? You just kind of like to, like to shake him up a little bit. Say, Come on, get over this. This is not a big thing. And you pray for them. And you work, try to work through them. And with, but you see, uh, to them it's evil. I mean, uh, uh, you know, there, there are young ladies I know, and, and, and uh, you know, they're, they're highly offended that, you know, that women wear pants or, or this and that. You know, I, I'm not, you know, but, you know, but what do you deal, how do you deal with that people? Or is some of the dietary laws, and, I mean, they're just, you know, you, 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 that's all they want to talk about. I mean, and, and, and you kind of say, well, come on, this, this is not Christianity. There's more, more things about than meat, drink, and, and uh, how you dress, right? Externals. There's more to Christianity than that, but that's all they want to talk about, you know? But see, the reason is because they have it in their mind, it is evil. And if they commit those things, it is a sin. 
Now, look at uh, verse 5. Romans 4, 14, verse 5. Sorry for jumping around, but it's just, I'm trying to touch on certain points here to, to understand what a weak conscience is all about and why this person is weak. And verse 5 says, One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. You see, that's the problem. They're not fully persuaded. I mean, that would be a double-minded person, but, but maybe they are persuaded in the sense of, this, this is sin to me. And so here, they are one man esteemed as one day alike. You know, uh, I have run across uh, Christians that, you know, they're, they're still in the Sabbath mode. They're still in the, in the, in the you know, whether it's Saturday or, or, or uh, you know, Sunday is the Christian Sabbath, and, and um, you know, you go to the grocery store on the Sabbath day, you're, you're violating a brother's conscience. I mean, honestly, they, they get offended. So what do you do? But see, the whole idea is that does, does, you know, these things of meat and dress, they don't commend us to God, do they? Like Paul says, they don't make us more acceptable or less acceptable. That's why it's, it says there, um, for he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. You see, we stand by faith. We walk by faith. We live by faith. We're justified by faith. Everything we do is because of we trust the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and we're, we're accepted in Him, and we're in Him. We cannot get out of Him, as it were, in Christ. And then this whole process of sanctification comes along, right? What we allow and what we don't allow. Where we are spiritually and, and dear ones, we still have to take, you know, take it by faith. Meaning, if I eat meat, you know, uh, or if I observe the Lord's Day a certain way, uh, you know, I, God still loves me, I'm still saved. I'm still acceptable to Him. Even I might have my extremes, right? Or your extremes. So that's, uh, so that's a weak brother. First of all, in the sense of, you know, what happens when he um, violates the false's conscience? What is going through his mindset? And uh, secondly, the action of, of uh, where we come into play. Where we cause a brother to stumble, to fall, to wound their conscience. They're offended. For different reasons. Now, let's just look quickly at, at two courses of action, okay? And really, uh, first of all, our actions towards a weak brother. Uh, go back to 1 Corinthians 8, verse 9, our principal verse. It says, but, uh, it says, uh, but take heed, lest any, at least by any means, this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. So, um, I am to consider... I am to accommodate. I am to curtail my Christian liberty for the sake of not offending this brother. Verse 13. I mean, that isn't it a strong statement? 8.13? Wherefore, if meat make my brother offend, I will eat no meat or no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. Now, let me read to you uh, Romans Romans 15, 1 through 3. No, uh, Romans um, 14, 21. Romans 14, 21. Notice it says, It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby my brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Now, when we get to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, you know, you're going to say, why am I stifled? Why, why can't I enjoy my Christianity? And, and, you know, why do I have to curtail and accommodate and, and, and stop certain things because it offends my brother? Why, why am I in bondage to my brother? Well, that's the wrong attitude. Okay? We'll see that. But we're going to see how important it is. This first action is that we... we uh, so let me read first, uh, Romans 15. Number three, it says, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. 
Let, it, let every one of us please as his neighbor for, for his good to edification, for even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. So it says, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities, like Paul says in Galatians chapter 6, you know, bear, you know, love one another, fulfill the law of Christ, bear one another's burdens. Well, we got to bear one another's infirmities too. Okay? Um, how long must I curtail my Christian liberty for this weak brother? Hmm. Let me read what Wearsby says. He says something here is pretty neat too. Uh, and his, uh, Warren Wearsby says this. Um, he, he talks about pampering. Now, think of this, you know. If, uh, well, if I give in to this weak brother, will, I, will he make me weak? Hmm. If I pamper him, will I, well, in a sense, will I be in bondage to his legalism? It's gonna have, because that's the, the idea. Romans chapter 14 says, you see, you, you're going you're gonna to despise, the, the strong person uh, is going to despise the weak brother. That's what it says there, Romans chapter 14. What does the weak brother do? He turns around and he judges you. You're, you're, you must not be a Christian if you live like that, or you listen to that, or you do those things. And, and that's, the, that's normal, isn't it? It's wrong. And so, uh, how long, he says, um, it is important to note that the stronger believer defers to the weak believer in love, only that he might help him to mature. Okay? Now, you're talking about, you know, bearing the infirmities of, of, of the weaker brother, you know. You're, you're going to work with them. You're going to bring the word of God. You're going to pray with them. You know, even, even uh, you know, in your charity, and uh, giving deferring, or, or as, as we say, uh, uh, curtail, curtailing, and uh, we would say would, would make bridge a gap or help the, the weak brother. But he says, it is important to note that the stronger believer defers to the weaker believer in love only that he might help him to mature. He does not pamper him. He seeks to edify him, to help him grow, Otherwise, both will become weak. What do you think? I mean, there's a, there, there's a truth to that, an element of, you know, you, 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 you work with a weaker brother or sister, uh, but after a while, when you start realizing that all they're doing basically is bringing you into bondage. Okay, you've got to stop. And there, that needs more, a, lot, a lot more wisdom, for sure, okay? And since Wilsbury is saying, exercise love, be the means of edification, educating and instructing the weak brother, so he or, or she might, her weak conscience might become strong, informed, enlightened, okay? Free! Now again, not to, you know, remember, whatsoever is not a faith is sin. They, they have to realize, well, this, this is nothing. This doesn't mean anything. This, you know, uh, uh, it doesn't, you're, you're securing Christ. So if you would turn back to Romans chapter 14, let's close it with this. Some, some verses here uh, from Romans. Look at Romans 5 through 9. Romans 14, 5 through 9. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he not, does not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks, and he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. Notice that. And, and, and that's really the case, you see. If the brother is doing that, you know, say, I, I just can't get over this, uh, you know, this Christmas thing, you know, I'm just, you know, I, and uh, I, I'm doing it unto the Lord. People, you know, you just got to be informed. I, I've tried to be informed, but I just can't, you know, I just, what I've read and stuff like that, I just, I would violate my conscience. I would, I would violate and offend my conscience if I, I did that. But see, 
but notice how you treat me. I'm regarding it unto the Lord. Uh, I, I'm not um, obsessive. I don't try to press it on you. I haven't. I don't believe. If, you, if I have, then you, you come and tell me. But the fact is, sure, we don't. Uh, certain things in the church, well, I, I think that should be neutral. But I haven't gone into your homes and said, well, you know, you shouldn't do that. That's wrong. For me and my house, this is what we're going to do. And I live by example. Uh, but see, I regard it unto the Lord. But verse, but this is the issue, 7. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man died to himself. You know, we're, we're together here. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are, are the Lord's. Uh, for this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. And so here, um, we are acting love towards uh, a weaker brother or sister. It says, let us not therefore judge one another anymore, verse 13. But judge this, rather that no man put up a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. See, don't blatantly offend them, wound them, put a stumbling block before them, grieve the brother in the practice of your Christian liberty. And, and dear ones, I, I've seen it, and uh, it's very serious sin. No, this brother is not going to, you know, he's not going to tell, you know, he's not going to curtail or, uh, you know, my, I, I got liberty to do this, man. He's not going to tell me, what, you know, uh, he just needs to get his act together. That's despising. That's what Paul says. Don't despise your brother, weaker brother. And then also the other way, and the, the weaker brother is not to condemn or judge. We're to help the, the weak brother. Teach by word and example and be patient. Don't indulge or pamper the brother. Hebrews 5.14. Again, it says, uh, it says, but strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, even those who by reason of, of the use have their senses exercised and discern both good and evil. Now there's, there's, there's things that, you know, uh, that I know Reformed Baptist uh, brethren that, uh, you know, I, they don't want me to, you know, they don't like me going to the store on Sunday, and, and I don't do it. Am I a hypocrite? Think about that, friend. You see, I, I, you know, I, I think the Lord's Day should be holy. I, I think we should spend the whole day. I mean, I, we, we, you know, uh, but I, I've been in Reformed Baptist churches where, where you know, needs of, needs of necessity, uh, uh, things, you know, uh, providentially, needs of mercy. You know, I, I've been taught that. Kathy's been taught that. <laughs> you see? And so this, this you know, at, at first, I'm not saying that she, I violated her conscience, I hope not. But, you know, at first, when we got married, that, that, you know, certain things you don't do on the Lord's Day. And so I would say, okay, that's cool. I won't do that. I, when I visit uh, their, her parents, I, you know, I, I don't go out of, well, I can do that on the Lord's Day. I mean, come on. I respect their convictions. And I don't do that. Okay? Because, you know... Is it really, you know, a real bother to me? No, not at all. But I've been in churches where uh, the Sabbath is almost like God, you know. You break the Sabbath, you're going to be crucified. And you're walking on holy ground if you break the Sabbath. Now, should I give into that? Should I go into their bondage? I mean, no, no. So, so it says, you know, I'm going to help the brother, but I'm not going to indulge or pamper. You see, I want to be able to say, but strong meat belong to them that are full age, even those who by reason to use have their senses exercised to serve both good and evil. It, it, it's, it's a matter of faith, you know. Am I, by eating or not eating or observing this or observing that, you know, does it make me more acceptable to the Lord? And once I get off that, once I get onto that tangent, it's all downhill. I mean, it's just, you know, I'm accepted because of the beloved, the Lord Jesus. I'm accepted by faith. It's His precious blood. Uh, and there are, there are things that are more important than meat and drink, okay, and how I observe the Sabbath day. That may be to me, but to another brother, it might be the issue at that point of time of sanctification. So we have to be very careful. I mean, it's, 
uh, Christian music, also other things, all these, you know, what you watch on TV, internet, you might have liberty to do that. And, and again, remember it says, happy are you. No, that's, the, I like that. Happy, not blessed. Happy are you that condemneth not those things that you allow. What do you allow, okay, before God? Be happy. You know, you know I have liberty. I mean, blessed be God. He's given me all things to richly enjoy. But I'm not going to enjoy it at the expense of hurting my brother or sister in the world. Now finally, we, we know, Paul says in Romans 14, that everyone's going to answer to the Lord. Uh, every, every, every servant, uh, if we judge or despise a brother, we're going to stand before the judgment of the seat of Christ and give an account. And again, let me just close with the rule, and I think it's a great rule, Romans 14, 22 and 23. It says, Hast thou faith, have it to thyself before God, happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. Now think about it. Isn't it. That is liberty, brother. That really is liberty. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, and because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. When we sin, we know what we do, what we're to do with it, with our sin, right? We confess it, forsake it, seek forgiveness uh, before God and before man. You see, we know what can wash away our sins. And, and dear ones, what, what can quiet that conscience? You see, we're talking about a defiled conscience and, a, and the red light's on, you know. You know, what, what can, you know, a Christian knows what to do. No, no, we can't, you know, cover it up and pull it out. No, we have to go to the Lord and confess it and realize that to me it's sin. And then as I grow in grace and grow in knowledge and understanding, well, then I realize, well, you know, my conscience is dedicated and this is not, uh, my heart does not condemn me. You see, dear ones, a good conscience, a clean conscience, a strong conscience comes from a clean heart. And when that light goes on, and you're a Christian, we flee to Christ. We have an advocate. Jesus Christ, the righteous. We can have a clean heart, clean conscience before God and with all men, and, and we can also help our brethren who are not who are weak, who who cannot allow this or can't allow that, and and we can work with them because uh, dear ones, it's very you know the terminology that Paul uses here. You know we sin against them, we sin against God, we sin against Christ, and even that verse says you know they perish, they are destroyed. I mean, could you imagine? I mean, brother, could you imagine that that because of my liberty? I, I trip up a brother who professes to believer, and, and, and then in the end we find out he, he falls away. And that guilt is on me. Because I wanted to enjoy my liberty at the expense of this brother. No, no, he's not one of God's elect. That's not. That that is, you know, that is. <laughs> That's, you know, is that justifying your sin? That's justifying your liberal? He wasn't God's elect. You know, uh, all those, you know, talks about those that, uh, the foundation is sure. God knows who's, who are his. Well, he must not have been a brother. No, you, you, were not, you, you weren't acting in charity. So I hope you have learned some things about that conscience, about that red light. And, and uh, this evening, if you're a weak brother or a sister, you know, um, it's not the end of the world. Okay? But see, what we have is the Word of God, and we have God, Holy Spirit in us, and we have brothers and sisters who care about each other, and we should care about each other. That I don't put a stumbling block, I don't offend, I don't wound, I don't uh, uh, be the instrument of destroying another Christian. Wow. Just for any, any time. That, that just, that is uh, unthinkable. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. And, uh, Thank you for the liberty that we have in the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit to give us grace. And, and again, there's so many things that we can richly enjoy. And uh, Father, we pray that we would uh, be able to um, help weaker brothers, consciences. Um, Lord, by, by the Word of God, by examples, by being patient, being loving. And, uh, but also wise, Lord, discerning that how quickly we can fall into bondage or legalism or 
in a sense, um, fortify this brother in his weakness. We don't want that. We thank you, Lord, uh, that you are the, the Lord and Savior and the Master of every one of us. And by your grace, we will stand. So, Lord, help us not to judge. Help us not to despise each other. And, Lord, help us, O oh Lord, uh, again, happy is the man that condemneth not himself for the things that he allows. Thank you, Father, for, for a good, clean conscience. In Jesus' name.